In this discussion, we're going to look at radioactive decay or nuclear decay, where an atom actually decomposes and becomes other particles. We'll look at specifically uranium 238. It has a nuclide symbol written that way. It has 92 protons. It has 90, or excuse me, has 238 protons and neutrons. From that, you'll recall we can subtract out the 92 from the 238, and it'll tell us how many neutrons we have. Now, atoms, when they were formed originally in the centers of stars, were fused together from a lot of smaller particles. Well, when they get this big, they actually will spontaneously decompose, becoming smaller particles. They'll give off three specific types of decay products. They give off alpha particles, indicated by the Greek letter alpha. They'll give off beta particles, indicated by the Greek letter beta. And they'll give off gamma rays. This is the only one that is not a particle. It's just an emission of energy. That's created when it rearranges the nucleus with no change in the nucleus other than the rearrangement. Now, if we look at the decay process itself, the atom undergoes a spontaneous decay. It falls apart, producing smaller particles. As it does so, the mass of the products is slightly less than the mass of the initial atom. We can use Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, to calculate the mass deficit conversion into energy. A small amount of matter is given off in energy. That energy is detectable by uh, radio receivers, such as a Geiger counter. And we, so we can actually calculate how many decompositions in a sample per second that we get. It allows us to come up with things like the half-life of the sample. But the reaction itself, which is what we're looking at here, the uranium atom decomposes, and as I indicated a minute ago, it gives off an alpha particle. This alpha particle indicated like this. Now that looks awful close to some other type of nuclide symbol. You recall this one? It's not exactly the same thing because when this comes off, it doesn't have any electrons. It will take off uh, electrons from some other substance. That's why they're so da uh, dangerous when they decompose. So in reality, this is closer to the helium nucleus with no electrons written this way. But we'll indicate it this way instead. Now, the alpha particle isn't the only particle that comes off. We also have to look and say, well, if we subtract this out of that particle, there's a little bit of math that goes on. 238 original particles, four of them come out in this, so there's another particle right here that comes out. Can you predict what it is? 38 minus 4 equals 234. 92 of them were protons originally. Two of them were protons when they left with the alpha particle. So you end up with 90 as a result in this additional particle. Now, if we've got 90 protons and you look that up on the periodic table, that's the chemical symbol TH, which is the symbol for thorium. And we have now shown alpha decay. And that alpha decay, the standard decomposition, your first one from uranium undergoes alpha decay. Now when you get down your products, both of those are separate individuals. They're different uh, particles. As I indicated a moment ago, that will take on two electrons, producing the helium particle, and the helium that we get uh, that you want to put in balloons, etc., ends up uh, from this process below the surface of the earth, it shows up as helium, it comes up in the head gases of oil wells. So, alpha decay, you get one particle splits into two particles, the sum of those two particles has to add up to the initial uh, particle. I use uranium as an example, but we see it happen with a lot of different substances. All right, now let's take the next step in the decomposition of uranium. Once it's turned into thorium, this will now undergo a beta decay, or can undergo a beta decay. Okay, now beta decay gives off a beta particle and another particle, but we're going to indicate the beta particle 
is slightly different. Okay. Now, what we end up doing, it has a mass of zero, and it has an atomic number of negative one. Now, this is the only one you'll ever see with an atomic number of neg negative one. And something unique happens with that particle. But let's do the math first and see what happens. Okay, if I take 234 minus zero, I end up with 234. But if I take a 90 minus a minus 91, or excuse me, minus a minus one, I end up with a 91. Now, if I go to the periodic table and I look up element number 91, there's our symbol for our product. Now, wait a minute. 90 minus a minus 1. What I've done is I've converted something in the nucleus into a proton. Well, the only other thing that's in the nucleus are neutrons. So what it's essentially done is it's kicked out this particle with mass of 0 and ended up increasing the atomic number by 1. It converted a neutron to a proton. Well then, let's take a good look and see what this really is with a mass of zero. And if we ended up with one more proton, you'll remember that protons are positively charged. Neutrons have no charge. So if that's the case, we took a neutron, made it into a proton, well what happened to the negative charge? Well, okay, the positive charge came out as a proton. The negative charge, the beta particle, is equivalent to an electron. But it didn't come out of the outer electron cloud. It came out of the nucleus. So we have to rethink what a neutron really is. A neutron is probably a proton with an electron switched on the side of it. And when it undergoes this beta decay, it's removing that. And the energy it comes out with the associated electron, converting the neutron to a proton, and we change the atomic number by increasing one. So you have alpha decay, and then it goes the decomposition of two protons and two neutrons out of the nucleus, and we have beta decay that takes a proton or takes a neutron and converts it into a proton. And then we have gamma radiation emission, the gamma decay as we call it, that just simply rearranges the nucleus, lets the neutrons shift themselves back inside there with the protons and it does not lose mass, all it does is gives off radiation. But oddly enough, those gamma rays are significantly more deadly than either one of these. Each one of these, the alpha particle is a very large particle, can easily be stopped. The beta particle is much smaller, comes out of there, but it can also be stopped. And your gamma radiation is the hardest one of the bunch because it's just radiation. It takes significantly greater work. You take something like a lead lining to be able to actually stop that. So in that in a nutshell is your radioactivity.